Welcome to Australian Earth Science Education. In this video, we are going to experiment with the elastic rebound theory of earthquakes. Along fault lines, rocks are deformed by tectonic forces. The force is stored in the rock as elastic energy. When the force becomes greater than the rock's elastic capacity, the energy is released as movement, an earthquake. In this experiment, we will model elastic forces using two bricks or pavers, a tape measure, and a long piece of elastic. You can use clothing elastic or a resistance band. You may wish to record your results using a pen and paper. You can graph the results on paper or with a computer graphing program. Set up your experiment on a level concrete surface. Place the brick on the ground and the tape measure alongside it with the front of the brick at zero. Put your loop of elastic around the brick and note the measurement you will start with when there's no stretch in the elastic. When collecting data in the experiment, always start with your hand at the same measurement where there's no stretch. Record results to the nearest centimeter. Move the brick back to the starting position for each trial and be sure to discard any outliers in your data. To perform the experiment, slowly and steadily pull on the elastic until the brick moves. This is your earthquake. Your hand should stop at the point where the brick moved. Record the new measurement for your hand and how far the brick moved. Repeat the experiment at least five times before adding another brick for extra mass. Calculate how far your hand moved for each trial. This is a rough measurement of elastic energy storage. I have calculated averages and rounded them to the nearest centimeter. Here is a graph of the data. The energy input from hand movement appears to be proportional to the output of brick movement based on this linear graph. However, the data from two bricks shows much more variability than one brick. Did you notice any trends in the data? For both one and two bricks, the hand movement is always greater than the brick movement. This means that only some of the elastic energy has been released. The same is true of elastic energy stored in rocks. Even after a major earthquake, there is still force stored in the rock that may be released as smaller aftershocks or may build up to a big earthquake in the future. Try this experiment for yourself and think about how you could use this model to explore earthquakes. Thanks for watching this Oz Earth Ed video. For more information and resources, visit the Australian Earth Science Education website at ozearthed.com.au.